This is Tristan with Victress Games. Hello and welcome back. This is our eighth video on how to make a game with GDevelop, the 2D open source game engine. In this video, we will add a couple more UI elements. I'm calling this video UI Hacks because we're going to be using some objects in slightly unusual ways. We will add a speedometer that shows the player's current speed and also a progress tracker that shows how far the player has traveled in the level. Are you I ready to get started? If we're gonna make a speedometer, the first thing we need to do is find out how fast we're going. Let's see if we can save our current speed as a variable. We'll pick a scene variable, we'll call it player speed, and we will set it to the value of our speed find out what our speed is, let's start by typing our object name. At the top here where it says physics2, this will give us access to the properties that are specific to the physics2 behavior. There are a ton of things you can learn about the object. The one that we are most interested in is this linear velocity in the y direction. Okay, that saves it as a variable. However, there's nothing for us to look at. Let's create a text object to display that variable. I like the way this race timer text object looks, so let's just duplicate it, and that'll keep all of the existing sizes, colors, and effects. And we'll drag it down here. Make sure this object is on the UI layer. Let's change the text to display the value of this variable. So the action will apply to the player speed text object. Modify the text. We'll need to use our to string function because the text object wants a string and the speed is a number. The variable player speed. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Let's move forward and see what happens. Ooh. So we have a negative number and we've got all these decimal points. The reason we have negative numbers is because the y axis increases as you go down and since we're moving up that's why the speed is negative okay to fix the negative number let's just multiply this value by negative one and then to get rid of the decimal points let's round the text that's being displayed let's see what it looks like now there we go we have no negative numbers, and no decimal points. I still think it's kind of hard to read with all these numbers changing so quickly. I think I'm just gonna divide everything by 10 to keep us under 100 units of speed. I'm just gonna divide the number that's displayed by 10. Okay, now our speed seems to be easy to read and, and looks good. Now having a number is great, but wouldn't it be cool if it actually was similar to what a speedometer does? I figured out a simple way for us to do this using a shape painter object. We haven't talked about shape painter objects before, but they're very useful and versatile. Let's add one. Let's start with it with the default values. It'll have a black outline color and the fill color the inside will be white. Now when we drag this shape painter object onto the screen, it'll show a placeholder icon here. However, it doesn't actually show up in the game. To make it do anything, you're gonna have to create an event that draws something. You click on the speedometer, and down towards the bottom, you'll see a group of actions called drawing. For instance, you could draw a circle. Position of this circle will make zero, zero, and the radius will be 100. That zero, 00 location is based off the position of the where we place this shape painter object. You can verify that by looking at the shape painter and this top option, draw the shapes relative to the object position in the scene. If you take this off, then it is absolute positions. So zero, 00 is the top left of the screen. And sometimes that's useful, but in this case, we're going to leave this checked and it'll draw it right where we place this icon. All right, do you wanna see what our circle looks like? That's the default look of the shape painter with its default values drawing a circle. Not too exciting, but it, like I said, it's highly versatile and it could do so many things. 
I use this for quite a few interesting extensions that I've made. And so in this case, we're going to do something kind of a hack because we're going to use only part of a drawing. Let me explain what I mean by that. Instead of drawing a circle, let's try drawing a arc. Let's start this angle at 180 and end it at 360. If you imagine like a half circle, 180 is the left side and it'll go up to 270 at the top and then 360 is over here at the right. So this should draw a half circle. Let's change the way it looks a little bit. We're gonna change the outline color. The outline size and make it pretty big. And for the fill, I'm gonna actually set the opacity to zero. So that instead of having a white fill, there's gonna be no fill at all. And let's see what this looks like. There we go. That kind of looks a little bit like a speedometer. Let's add an, another effect so it looks nicer. Let's add the glow effect to the shape painter. Choose the black color and see what it looks like. I think I need it to be a little bit bigger. So on our draw event, we'll change it from the radius of 100 pixels to 150 pixels on the radius and it wasn't quite centered. So let's scoot it over a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, I've got to get on the right layer. I always make that mistake. There we go. I might scoot the text over a little bit, but other than that, it's looking really well. This speedometer currently starts at the angle of 180 and goes to 360. To make the speedometer move dynamically, what if we set this amount equal to our speed? Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to leave our starting angle at 180, but instead of doing a static 360, let's take the starting angle, which is 180, and let's add our variable player speed. So whatever our player speed is, will be added to 180 degrees. So that's working pretty good. However, it's going way past what I wanted to go past. So the number is too big. To shrink the number, we can just divide it. Let's divide this number by six. Okay, I like the way this looks. I think the speedometer is finished. Next, I want to create a visual indicator that players can see how far along the level they have gone. For this, I'm going to use another UI hack by repurposing a draggable slider. Let me show you what a slider normally looks like. First, we need to install the extension. This is an extension that I made. To use it, you create a shape painter, and then you add the draggable slider behavior. There's a lot of options here that will let you choose how it looks like but let's just show you what the default look of the slider is. We'll put our UI layer. All right, let's test this. Okay, so this is what the default slider looks like. It's a UI element that lets users select a numerical number by dragging this thumb. By default, it's a range of numbers between zero here on the left, and when it's full, that's a value of one. So you can almost think of any number in here is a number between zero and one, and the middle, of course, will be 0.5. We're going to use this in a way that doesn't let the users interact with it. Instead, our events are going to change the position of the slider based on how far the player has moved across the level. Let's also create a number that will display the progress. I'll copy the player speed object. And I'll use this to display the percent complete. I'll change the placeholder text to show that it's a percent. Let's see if we can make this slider look a little nicer. To change the way a slider looks, you will change the properties under the behavior. Feel free to set these however you like. I'm gonna choose what I think looks nice. I'm going to make the thumb color match the color of the player. Let's change the thumb shape from a circle to a rectangle. Let's also add the glow effect to this shape painter. And let's see how it looks now. 
Nice. What we want is for this progress tracker just to move along the track the same percentage that the actual player is traveling. Okay, let's see if we can set that using events. In order for us to calculate the percentage of the level that the player has completed, we first need to know how long the actual level is. Let's set a variable to keep track of this. We'll set it to the distance between the starting and finish line. And we want to know about their Y values. And the track length is not going to change, so let's just do it one time at the beginning of the scene. This will save us some CPU cycles. Next, we need to know how far the player has traveled. So let's do another scene variable. Distance traveled, and instead of measuring between the starting and finish line, let's measure between the starting line and the player. Now that we've calculated the distance traveled and we know the length of the track, we can easily divide those to find the percentage that has been traveled so far. So let's use this number we just calculated and put it inside the text object for percent traveled. Modify the text and we'll set it to that variable. We'll have to use the toString function to convert the number into a string. Let's do a quick test. Okay, it's showing a negative number with a lot of decimals. The reason it's the negative number is because we're below the starting line and it gets to about zero at the start line and it becomes positive. So we can fix that by using the clamp function. The clamp function is very useful. It basically enforces a minimum and a maximum value. So we use a clamp function and the first parameter is your starting number and then the minimum number and the maximum number. So this clamp is gonna make sure that whatever this calculates out to be, it will set a minimum value of zero and a maximum of one. To get rid of those extra decimal points, let's multiply this number by 100 and we will round it. And let's also add that percent symbol at the end. Okay, our number is incrementing, but our slider is not moving. So for our action, we will choose the slider, progress tracker, and we're going to set the slider value. We'll set it to the variable. Let's see if that worked. There it goes, it's sliding across. Because we have that clam function, it should stop at the 100% complete. I'll do my best to make it through this level. percent. That's all for this video. In our next video, we will create a few more levels by tweaking our procedural generation algorithm to give some variety to the game. If you're finding these videos valuable, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to see what else I'm working on, follow me at Victorious Games on Twitter. And lastly, you are welcome to join us on our Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.